Yeah, first off, uh, congratulations to Willie Z on the uh, winning of the FedEx St. Jude's Golf Tournament. Obviously a wonderful event for our city and uh, recognition of St. Jude and everything they've done uh, throughout our world. So I, I just think it's a wonderful event. Uh, congratulations to him and what a, what a great deal for our community. Um, ten practices into spring ball and really like the direction of this program and the way guys are doing things. Um, just quite pleased. Obviously, we day off today. Uh, we got some meetings coming up later this afternoon, but then you know, hitting get it with practice number 11 tomorrow. We were able to do a scrimmage at uh, Simmons Bank Stadium uh, this past Saturday. I'm just pleased. You know, I think the guys gave a lot of effort. Uh, I like the competition, the competitive nature of our guys and the way they go out there and uh, want to do things at the highest level and uphold the standards of our program. So get, seeing a lot of good, um, continue to fix a lot of things. We're still a long ways away from September 3rd, but we're honing in on things. I think the installations are, are slowing down and now just continue to clean up the fundamentals and the things we need to progress as a program. But uh, very pleased and excited to get this thing continue rolling. Ryan, when you get this close to opening kickoff, where, if, if there is a switch in terms where you're kind of like, we're out of fall camp and now we're in preparation mode for Mississippi State? Yeah, I think it works out really well. You know, we're going to end camp technically this upcoming Sunday. So, you know, we've got another week uh, worth of work and then, you know, school starts. And I think that's a great break because now you get back into the morning routine. We're back to morning practices where the guys will come in you know, fulfill their football obligations and have the rest of the day to focus on their academics. So I think that's a perfect time, you know, roughly two weeks prior to the kickoff of the first game uh, to be able to get through. So we got one more week of camp, and our guys know it. We're going to grind this week and then kind of get back into more of a game mode and more of a routine of normalcy, if you will. And so, you know, right now our focus obviously is on self-improvement, you know, continue to get better as a program. But then, you know, as we get closer and closer to the third, we'll focus more on Mississippi State. And in terms of that, is there anybody budding for the, the, the running back competition going on? Is there anybody, you know, kind of budding it for that? Yeah, you know, look, I've been quite pleased with a lot of guys. I mean, we, look, we know there's a lot of bodies in that room. And uh, there's literally, if we could go into every practice, I'd tell you that there's been a different guy with the ones every single time. And I think that's good, right? And the scrimmage is really – are sometimes the best way to get a tell for things. Now, some guys may be running behind the third offensive line, but uh, you know, right now it truly is up for grabs. But uh, they're all capable. I think we'll be excited when the final product comes up. With the scrimmage, Ryan, is there anything that just kind of stood out that was impressing you 10 practices in? You know, I do think that the cleanliness of the game was played. You know, you go out there, not a lot of penalties. This is our first time actually having officials out there. We had an AAC head referee there and some of his crew. And so for the very first time to be able to go out there in front of officials, yes, there's something if I blow a false start or something like that, but to be able to go out there and play a clean game. And I think that's important because then that means the guys were dialed in. I did think you got to see the competitive nature uh, of the team, right? To be able to go out there live, it's played, it's in our stadium, and, and that was unique. The energy was there. It was empty stands. It felt like one of those COVID years, uh, but uh, it, it was quite pleasing just to see them the way they went out there and battled down and down. That was a nice warm day. And uh, I was just proud that they went out there and grinded it out. Maybe specifically, did anybody just really stand out as far as specific players who really kind of impressed a little bit? Yeah, you know, Asa Martin did have a good day, uh, you know, at the running back position. I thought he does some good things. You know, Sutton Smith is a true freshman running back that did some good stuff. We're continuing to see progress from Davion Ross, a new name for you guys, and JoJo Norwood uh, in the secondary. I just continue to see those guys continue to grow. Like I told you guys before, uh, a long mixture of guys at the defensive line position. Hermonte Hamilton is a name that we don't probably mention enough. The transfer from Ohio State has stepped up. Obviously, Wardell Stucksworth. A lot of those guys continue to do things at a high level. Um, you know, we got to continue to develop what we are, uh, you know, we're, we're continuing to look at the quarterback deal. Obviously, we know Seth Hennigan's our quarterback, but pleased with some of the stuff Ryan Glover's been able to do. We've got the two freshman quarterback uh, quarterbacks that were able to do some things, and then the depth at wide receiver. I think that's what really showed up, you know, Saturday scrimmage is some of the depth at wide receiver as well. Speaking of Cormonte, obviously he's from here. We obviously know his name. Transfer, just getting in. How is he kind of adjusting? this soon, you know, getting into everything. Yeah, into he, he's been phenomenal. And Cremonte is a young man that I got to know a little bit out of high school. Um, obviously went to Ohio State and like a lot of guys realized, maybe it was a better situation for him to come uh, to Memphis and then to come back home. And he has been first class. I mean, he's, he's well thought of the kind of guy, not only in the locker room, but just amongst everybody that he's been around. Uh, very thoughtful, very smart, very intelligent, very hardworking. And he's got a great motor. And to see him on the defensive line, what he's been able, capable to do, uh, it's been phenomenal. Does he have an advantage because he played for Matt Barnes last year? You know, he, he was actually played a little bit of tight end actually at Ohio State, but maybe a little bit of thought of, hey, I have an understanding of what type of guy this is. 
um, and then also type of the, the scheme that may be running, but not too much, right? He obviously missed spring ball, so I wouldn't say that's a, a huge advantage, but uh, he, he gets it and he, he pushes and he works hard. How about young line? Are you settled there? Are there competitive battles for number ones there? Yeah, I think we are. Uh, you know, I don't know if you're ever selling a line. You, you talk to any college football coach, they'll always say, you know, hold on. But uh, I, I do think there's, you know, some competitive battles there. You know, Austin Myers was a guy that started the first three games uh, at left tackle for us last year, broke his leg, came back. Um, you know, he's going to continue to battle. We, we, we got a lot of spots, right, whether it's the starting guard spots. We're debating whether we move Matt Dale over to right tackle, keep him at right guard. Um, McCollum Pounders want to continue to see his growth. Jonah Gamble has played some for us at left tackle last year. Also, we saw him at spring playing left guard. Um, you know, so I think just continue to throw those guys in there. Mitchell Gildahouse has had, actually had a very nice spring, a name that you guys may not be as familiar with, but has been on our roster. And I, I think as you guys continue to see those things, uh, move and push, we'll, we'll see what shakes out with that position. Other than uh, the, the bumps and bruises, any major injuries so far in, in the camp? Yeah, you know, nothing major, knock on wood. Um, you know, they're the no, no normal deal um, that the guys are going to have the bumps and bruises, uh, especially 10 practice in the camp, and that's part of it. Uh, for lack of a better term, we call it the hardening of a team as you get ready for a, a long season and a grind of a season. But uh, we, we're staying pretty healthy and pleased. Last year you went to Nashville and you're forty with the Lambert. What was the reasoning and rationale for not doing that? Issue. Yeah, so it was actually three years ago. It's been almost four years since we went to Lambeth. Um, and and then last year was Nashville during the spring. So we've actually never gone to Nashville during training camp. Uh, this year, with you know what's happened is over the last few years, is training camp used to be a full month. It used to be able to get it for a month. Yeah, it's always good to have that break. With training camp really only being 15 practices, we thought it was best to try to kind of hone it in, keep it here local. We've got a fantastic facility. You know, when you do those things, right, we could go in the indoor one day. We could use the two grass fields. We've got the beautiful turf field. We can do the new turf at the stadium, which is absolutely fantastic. So grateful to the city for doing that. That new turf at the stadium is phenomenal. If you guys haven't had the opportunity to check it out. Um, so we feel like we've got enough places around here to do things. Uh, you know, later in the week, we're actually going to go and stay in a hotel, get away, and kind of do some team bonding that way. But, you know, just with the logistics of things um, and also, you know, the safety, we always want to make sure wherever we're going to play that the fields are up to par, uh, not necessarily the living situations. Our guys will, will make it work, but the, the fields are up to par. So it was just one of those things. We're always looking at ways to explore to continue to find ways to, for camaraderie and maybe even go away uh, in the future years. this point in like what do you think you can kind of count on offensively and defensively already temporizing like you feel like this is going to be part of our identity yeah you know i do think um having a quarterback that you trust and you know that, that has right we i've been here now seven years right when we first got here well who was it going to be was it riley ferguson who was it the guys that are competing then we got brady white there's still that quarterback competition then everybody knew that brady was a guy you know last year uh, who was it going to be in the quarterback deal and then this year you know look we're, we're excited about the guys in that quarterback room but i think we're really excited about what seth hennigan's able to do in this offense his understanding and so you can hang your hat on man we got a, a smart intelligent quarterback that we think can operate at a high level he has the ability throw the ball deep, throw the intermediate passes. Um, and I think being able to do that will help our run game because I know that that's been a concern. Hey, the run game isn't what it has been. Um, and I think, you know, by being able to do that, that's kind of helped us. So we're going to realize we got a quarterback. And we also, like I keep saying, we got depth at wide receiver. And that's unique. Um, we've had a lot of fantastic wide receivers come through here, but the depth that we've been able to have has been great. And then defensively, I just get to see the, the hunger and the excitement of those guys. Like, you know, yesterday, I'll give you an example. We did a practice, right? We had a, a scrimmage on Saturday, and then we did a practice yesterday uh, right back at it. You know, a lot of guys would say, oh, why, scrimmage, that should be the day off. No, let's get back out there. Let's go out there and have some fun, get after it. Played no music, and it was just hot and dry. And, and I said, this is just going to be one of those boring, monotonous practices. We're not doing a lot of third down, red zone going. Let's just go out there and play football and see who loves it. And to hear the defense emotions and the excitement and their – um, the ability to, to go out there and compete at the highest level. It was just kind of fun to see. So I think we're going to see a defense that's uh, flying around with a lot of energy. And not to say we haven't had that in the past, but I think just being able to play at a high level, a lot of excitement. They're doing a lot of things. I think we're going to get more takeaways this year than we've ever had. And uh, you know, those are things we'll look forward to seeing. For. With two new coordinators, how much of a unknown element will there be for whether it's people watching or Mississippi State? Like, do you feel like you can use that 
to your advantage? Absolutely. Like I said, because Mississippi State will end up watching this clip. We're, we're going to be going under center running triple option, very similar to Navy for game one. <laughs> and then defensively, we're lining up in that this new defense we created, the 2-2 uh, whatever, right? The 2-2-7. Uh, no, I think you're going to see some similarities of what we saw in our offense in the past. And then defensively, it's very, and, and this is not coach speak, it's a very diverse defense, right? We're going to be multiple in everything we can do. A lot depends on the opponent, right? I, I, you know, you're not going to line up versus Mississippi State and Navy in the same defense, right? And it's just, it doesn't make sense. So, um, but I think our fans and, and all those that get to watch are going to be quite impressed with uh, the product on the field and the schemes. I mean, look, it's always going to be about the players and, and their intelligence and all those stuff. I, I like the schemes, but, you know, I think the effort and energy is going to be there. Ryan, with the linebacker group, obviously we play some J.J. Russell. You still got Zay there and a couple new faces. How do you feel about the progression of that group in specific? Yeah, look, I mean, we know Zay Collins has been an absolute stud for us, for our program for a long time. Uh, he will continue to do so through this uh, final season here. But then, you know, Tyler Murray, the, the young man that transferred from Charlotte, has been absolutely phenomenal. Tyler Murray's one of those guys, I think he's an NFL draft prospect. Uh, there's all over the field they can play any of the linebacker positions. He's intelligent. He gets it. He can run. He can hit. Uh, he can play special teams. He's been great. And then Jeff Canton. Um, is also a new face for some of you guys that's been great. Jeff's been phenomenal in there. And then you start to look, okay, well, who else you got? You got Sincere Evans has done a really nice job. The local product, you know, that, that's you know, stepping up the plates and special teams last year, I think we'll see him on the field a little bit more. Davion Mayo, a name that maybe you guys may not be as familiar with, uh, a young man from Arkansas that's, you know, finally getting his feel for it, a linebacker position. You know, Andrew Jones is another redshirt freshman. Uh, that we see can get in the mix, you know. So we're we're just continuing to look at that, but I feel good about the depth of linebacker as well. How are confident are you in your field goal kicker this year? Yeah, look, um, that we know the issues that we had last year, and I think the biggest thing is is being healthy. We have David Kemp and Chris Howard, and it's just kind of letting it shake out and see what's going to happen out there. And it's truly one of those, like, hey, who, who who's the best man? Let it shake itself and and figure out who we got. Um, you know, David obviously was able to play limited due to injury last year. Chris had had some in-game experience uh, at the University of Florida. And, it, you know, I'm not one of those. I'm not a kicking coach. I, I have full faith in Coach Bengals that will choose the right one for us moving forward. With the run game, what tweaks have you seen kind of just so far with that Coach Dawkins has kind of done to kind of bring in and try to, you know, help in with what you and Bridge have been doing so far with the run game? Yeah, I mean, look, Coach Dawkins is, is an absolutely phenomenal coach. Uh, and the biggest thing is he holds those guys accountable to – what that room should look like. We know the standards of running back here at the University of Memphis, and he doesn't shy away from that, and I love it. He's hard on his guys. Uh, he coaches his guys really hard. And the biggest thing, as soon as he sees an ounce of maybe poor ball security, see ya, gone. You know, whatever that looks like, it's they're off the field, and it's unacceptable. And he calls out even, oh, the ball doesn't come out. Oh, I see the right elbow extended out. Let's go, next guy up. And uh, But he's also creative. He's been, uh, you know, high levels of success running the football. So. There's some nuances, you know, maybe to the run game that will be added from some of his creative ideas. Can't reveal what some of those might be. Sure. They can't reveal what some of those might be. Uh, so just practicing. Yeah, I mean, there's we've run every scheme in the book since I've been here as far <laughs> as a run game. Um, sometimes maybe we run too much, and so maybe it's just dialing it down and and figuring out what really works well for our backs. What are some of the positives for not naming a top one? Yeah, I, I, look, it's. You always want to keep that carrot out there, and I think that's part of it. You know, just the, the competition um, part of it. Because by going and naming a running back, we've also had starters have started week one and then get injured. It's a position that, you know, as much as we like to run the ball, where guys will get a little bit banged up. And so they're, they're going to have to get multiple reps. And, you know, you never want a guy to have 40 carries in a game. We go back to our days at UCF, and we had Kevin Smith that did get 40 carries a game and led the country with over 2,000 yards rushing. But those are harder and harder to find. So I think just keeping those guys uh, fresh in a rotation and then kind of figuring out as we get closer, you know, um, who are the guys that can do it. And we're going to keep challenging them, right? Tomorrow, even though it's not a scrimmage, we need to see productivity during their practice and making sure that if they can't own the football and hold on to it, they're going to give themselves a chance. Hey, one area, what one area from the scrimmage that really disappointed you? Uh, we, you know, we had some uh, rotational guys in there at the center position, and the snaps weren't as clean as they need to be. And I, I, I go back to that uh, poor snap, whether it's shotgun or under center, and that's a uh, it can cause issue. And that's just as you know, that's a turnover, just like fumbling the ball, or throwing an interception. So that's one of those things uh, we can continue to clean up. And then, you know, just making sure our special teams units are honed in on. But there you go.
Brian, how do you find that balance? Of, like you, you, you said many times, you don't necessarily want to run by committee and find that, that top guy. But like you said, on a pitch count, you kind of want his carries to be what they are. How do you how do you find that balance in having your top guy but spreading the ball to some of your other running backs? Yeah, you know, Frank, if I were to just lay it out there and say, okay, what's a perfect situation in a regular game based off of college statistics of 82 plays, right? And you, know, you maybe your starter gets uh, 15 carries, right? or 15 touches, the backup gets 10, and then another guy gets five, you know, and then maybe a sprinkle guy in on third down and all that. But, you know, once you start getting to that fourth or fifth running back, it's going to be hard-pressed. That means that you're really not in love with your one or two. And uh, too often we've had to go down that depth chart, and I'd like to be able to really stick with, hey, who are our top two guys? Obviously, you want to be able to trust your third and your fourth, um, and then if they're the fifth or sixth, they better be playing a heck of a lot of special teams. Yeah. I know that he's doing really, really well with Las Vegas right now. He had a lot of good things to say about you as his coach, his position coach, and then, of course, his head coach. What is it like for you to see him, especially the transformation that he made here? Yeah, well, you can see the big smile you put on my face just by mentioning his name. Dylan's a special young man. Um, I think just the development of what occurred here is – let's start with that. I mean, a, a guy that came in as a 246-pound tight end, we had to have the conversation, hey, you're going to go play defense line because we're not sure if you can play tight end here. And then go have that conversation again. Well, maybe you should come play O line, and that's never like an intriguing thing. Anybody that knows, like most D linemen aren't excited to go play O line, go put on those knee braces, and go block people, and hang out with all the fat guys. And uh, you know, to his credit, he bought into it, and obviously that allowed him to start as a redshirt freshman, his first year ever playing offense line. And they get to see his development. What's helped him, and in fact, the Raiders just talked about this the other day. He's the only rookie offensive lineman that played three different positions already in a preseason game. And I think that's phenomenal, and that, credit to him. But also the idea that he played left guard here, okay? Then he played right tackle here. Then he played right guard, and then he got some snaps here in practice and then snaps at the senior bowl. So that just shows you his intellect, his work ethic. Uh, it's paying off. Uh, the Raiders know they got a phenomenal young man. Uh, a couple of their scouts were here the other day just bragging on him and, and what, what they're, how immensely proud they are, and, and myself included, right, about what he will become and what he already has become. What do you think is his best? Pro spot on that line. I, I truly believe, Dave, he can play all three interior positions. You know, I mean, it's left guard, right guard, you can toss it up. The center position does come with some nuances, right? Calling a game as an NFL center is not easy. It's not just, hey, let's Mike ID 54 and let's roll it out there. Now you've got to, you know, all of a sudden you're talking about 20 extra hours of film work a week, which he's certainly capable of. But that's one of those positions, it's hard had you never played it. But uh, if there's anybody that could do it, it could be him. Ryan, you mentioned Sutton Smith, um, some a little bit on Monday. Uh, you guys are pretty high on a young freshman out here. Is that somebody who should, uh, you know, who can make some progress happen a little bit? I think so. I mean, I think I'm, I always say this: I'm all for freshman playing because that means we got better, right? That means we did one of those things that's a little bit better. And I'll, and I'll go back to this: is, and this is dealing with all freshmen on paper. Okay, let's just say this: on paper, we were told that last year's recruiting class was the best in program history, right? The one that's now. Redshirt freshmen and sophomores, okay? This, then the past class beat that one out, and those are all true freshmen. So if you look, the best back-to-back -back recruiting classes in program history are freshmen, redshirt freshmen, and sophomores. That's a pretty good thing. That means we got some guys that will be able to continue to push and compete. It also means we're building the program the right way for long-term success. But Sutton is a guy that maybe we'll get to see out here on some Saturdays. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, guys. Appreciate y'all. Thanks for coming out today.